All right. So this is going to be a demonstration of what I call Igor, a prototype, very utilitarian electric longboard. Homemade, mostly out of scrap parts, including a longboard, a uh, scooter motor, route roughly two-thirds horsepower, 200 millimeter pneumatic tire, number 25 sprocket chain, and the single most expensive part, lithium polymer batteries. So, let's get this show on the road. So, as you can see, <clears throat> I've got both brake and throttle on a single, uh, single hand controller. Uh, I found out that I connected up the apps brake uh, incorrectly. That's that back brake there. Um, so I, I, I simply don't have enough uh, leverage with a hand lever in order to pull it just hard enough to stop the board. So I just took out the steel cable so I can yank on it with my hand. And uh, that's the throttle right there. I don't have the lights hooked up, but it doesn't really need them. So I just press the lever very gently and it starts to move. Now I'm being very gentle with that lever because this thing has not a whole lot of uh, horsepower but it has a huge amount of low end torque so it can just take you right off your feet. And it doesn't help that it has a 5 to 1 gear ratio uh, which is my own fault, I didn't really think about that. So as you can tell, all the steering is done with that front truck, uh, just by tilting the board. Since that rear wheel is fixed in the center, it's always maintaining contact with the ground, even at a very steep angle. So there's not much worry about that. There is the concern, however, that there is only a single front truck to do that turning. Normally, you'd have a front and a rear skateboard truck. And so, this has a pretty bad turning radius in comparison to the average longboard. In order to make up for this, I have uh, I've uh, gotten a special truck at a 50 degree base plate angle and put in eight angled risers, uh, 7 degree angled risers on top of it, in order to get a more natural turning radius. When it turns, it still doesn't feel much like a normal longboard, however. Uh, it feels like a, like a downhill longboard, since that steering is all up front. Uh, there's not much fishtailing or sliding that this thing can do, um, but I don't think you really want to do that on, a, on an electric skateboard anyway, so let's do this. One of the frequent concerns you hear when you talk about an electric longboard is what happens if you hit a rock, don't you just go flying? Well, I don't know about a regular four-wheeled board, but on a three-wheeler, you get something like this. In other words, you get absolutely nothing. It just hops right over them, and that's because no matter how big the obstacle is, you can still keep three wheels in contact with the ground at all times, unlike with a four-wheeled platform that has no suspension. Now, the, uh, the top speed for this is around 12 miles an hour, and the maximum uh, distance, according to the very scientific... Uh, distance measuring tool, known as Pokemon Go, uh, it goes around six miles. So let's see if I can get it up to that top speed for you. Demonstrate about how fast that would feel. Remember what I was saying about that low end torque? Yeah, you really gotta be gentle on that uh, throttle. Jeez. I need to fix that, seriously. I can put a low pass filter on the throttle somehow, I'm sure of it.
despite having a chain drive, it's not actually very noisy. Most of the noise actually comes from those front wheels in contact with the ground. Thank you. 